Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 8.1b. This is plasma and tissue fluid. What is blood plasma exactly? If you take a sample of your blood right now and centrifuge it, centrifuge means you spin it under really, really high speeds. What will happen is the denser items, the denser substances are going to sink and then the ones who are not so dense will be at the top. So it forms, it separates, you know, your blood into these separate sections. The lowest section here is red blood cells, which is 45, 44% around there of the entire volume. 1% would be platelets and white blood cells. And the remaining 55%, which is at the top layer, is the least dense. Uh, and that's because it has a lot, a lot of water, as well as ions, proteins, nutrients, wastes, and gases. Water is a very important component of blood plasma because it is a good solvent and has high specific heat capacity. You know about water already? It's in chapter 2. You can go back and refer. But yeah, that's plasma, mostly water and all these other things. Now, that's blood plasma. So what exactly is tissue fluid? So blood plasma is found in your blood, right, which is in your vessels. Tissue fluid or interstitial fluids are fluids that's outside the ves vessels, bathing the cells, and acts as a medium for exchange of materials between the cells and the blood. Okay, so plasma is here in the vessels, whereas the Tissue fluid is outside here in this blue region, bathing the cells. Tissue fluid actually is formed from blood plasma. So although they are different places, but tissue fluid are formed from blood plasma and would be returned to the blood eventually. So let's see, how is tissue fluid formed and how is it returned to the blood? First off, formation of tissue fluid. How is it formed? Well, in simple words, formation of tissue fluid is due to the differences in blood pressure at the arterial and venous ends. The blood pressure at the arterial end is always going to be higher well, because it's closer to the heart. Whereas at the vein venous end, there is a lower blood pressure. And therefore, due to these differences in pressure, the tissue fluid Okay, the plasma will be forced out of the capillary to become tissue fluid at the arterial end. And this blood plasma flows out through endothelial pores of these capillaries. If you remember in our last video, capillaries have endothelial cell. It is one cell thick. But between those endothelial cells, there are pores. And those pores are essential in tissue fluid formation. Now, as I said just now, gaps are small, so you cannot expect everything to pass through. There are things that will stay in the blood and will not become tissue fluid. Larger plasma proteins, for example, cannot pass through. Small ones can, but larger ones cannot. Red blood cells definitely cannot pass through. Platelets as well. And this kind of determines the composition of tissue fluid. Although it's generally quite similar to the blood plasma's composition, quite similar, but there are some exceptions. Let's look at it. Tissue fluid contains water, gases, glucose, fatty acids, urea ions, and all these things are still in the blood plasma, so pretty much the same. However, it has smaller proteins, for example, antibodies. Um, and no large proteins. It overall has a lower protein concentration than plasma because, again, the large proteins cannot exit the vessels. It stays in the blood plasma. Also, tissue fluid contains some white blood cells. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, red blood cells cannot pass through the gaps, but white blood cells can? Well, some white blood cells, for example, phagocytes, sometimes can leave through a separate mechanism even though they are quite large. And this is essential because white blood cells, you know, they defend the body, right? So they need to be in places to defend it. So yeah, white blood cells can pass through, uh, can be in tissue fluid and pass through from the blood vessels into tissue fluid. However, other cells cannot. 
one more thing about tissue fluid, it also has a lower oxygen concentration than blood plasma. And this makes sense because the vessels contain oxygenated blood, right? Means the blood carries oxygen. And therefore, the tissue fluid will always have a lower oxygen concentration. And this is a good thing. So oxygen can diffuse from the vessels into the cells through via the tissue fluid because of that concentration gradient, that difference in concentration. So this is a good thing. Now, what does it not have? Again, just a repeat and reminder, it has no platelets, it has no large proteins, too big, no red blood cells. Again, too big, and none of them have special mechanisms to exit like some phagocytes. So that's the composition of tissue fluid and how tissue fluid is formed. How is tissue fluid then returned into the blood? Because if you know it goes out, it must come back somewhere. If not, that's going to result in a lot of issues, right? It's just going to continue swelling and swelling. We don't want that. We want the tissue fluid to return to the blood. So what is going on? Now, to understand the return of tissue fluid in the blood, we must understand the different gradients at work here. Now, at the arterial end of the capillary, this is where the tissue fluid is formed, right? Formed. Um, there is actually a hydrostatic pressure gradient at work here. This is due to the differences in pressure of the arterial end and the venous end. And the high pressure of the arterial end basically pushes the blood plasma out and becomes tissue fluid, right? But there's actually also another gradient at work here, which is the solute concentration gradient. As we mentioned just now, when we talk about composition of tissue fluid, the tissue fluid has a lesser concentration, a lower concentration of proteins, which means the vessel, the, cap the cap capillaries, inside them, they have a higher solute concentration. And when they have a higher solute concentration, water will want to move back via osmosis from an area like that is less concentrated to an area that's more concentrated. With an area that has high water potential to an area with lower water potential, right? So there's a solute concentration gradient there. Water will want to move back. However, at the arterial end of the capillary, it's a very, very small, you know, movement. Most movement is out. There's net movement of water out to form tissue fluid. However, at the venous end, there is very little pressure because, well, venous end, very, very low pressure. The solute concentration gradient is still there due to those large dissolved proteins. And therefore, we can see here that the major gradient acting upon this movement right is solute concentration gradient so net movement of water is back back into the vessels so tissue fluid moves back in to the vessels at the venous and becoming blood plasma again so a shorter version of that is at the arterial end well blood pressure is a lot higher Therefore, tissue fluids form the venous end. The tissue fluid moves back into the blood because there is a solute concentration gradient. The blood plasma has a higher solute concentration. However, however, only ninety percent is returned to the blood through endothelial gaps in the capillaries. What happens to that ten percent? What happens to it? So the 10% is not allowed to accumulate because again, just the accumulation of 10% will become bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it will swell. It's not a good idea. The 10% is returned through lymph. 10% of this tissue fluid moves into lymphatic vessels and become lymph. And lymph actually drains into the subclavian veins near the heart. This here point, this here, um, this these veins right here and here show you where the subclavian veins are and how it's returned to the heart, uh, into the vena cava, and then goes there and be oxygenated. I mean, yeah, it just returns that, drawing back to the blood. The, so yeah, that is 
plasma and tissue fluid. Now, lymph used to be a syllabus, but it's not anymore. So um, this is just extra information. But here is a little table that kind of summarize all the compositions uh, and function of these three different liquids. I hope you have learned something in this video. I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.